Take the number 12. 12 can be written as a product of other, smaller numbers. A number like 12 is known as a composite number. Other examples are 4, 6, 8, 9, and so on. But what about the other numbers that we didn't mention? These are the numbers which can only be written as a product of themselves. These are prime numbers. Its precise definition is a positive integer greater than 1 that cannot be evenly divided by any other integer except itself and 1. You get the idea. Except for 0 and 1, every natural number is either composite or prime. Every single composite number can be foundationally factored into primes. And it can be done so in one way and one way only. So except for the order, we arrive at the same factors. This is known as the fundamental theorem of arithmetics. And it shows us exactly why prime numbers are the building blocks of all numbers. But there are two reasons why this analogy is incomplete. First, because unlike elements in chemistry, there is an infinite number of primes. Well, how do we know that exactly? How can we actually prove that there are infinite prime numbers? Let's assume the opposite, that there is a finite number of primes, p1, p2, p3, up to pn. Say we want to multiply all these primes together and create the number p. What would happen? We know that p will absolutely have to be perfectly divided by each and any pi, since it is a factor of p. But this is actually a problem. p doesn't tell us anything new. It is just a product of the previous numbers. Things change drastically when we add 1 to the set of prime numbers. The resulting number will be a new number, called n. We know for a fact that if n results in a prime number, it will be a new prime and must therefore be added to the list of primes. If n happens to be a composite number instead, we need to see if it breaks into new primes, which by definition, it will. These resulting new primes should be added to the list. For example, say we start with a list of 2 times 3 times 5 plus 1. N is therefore 31. 31 is a new prime number which is not already on the list and must therefore be added to it. Now we have a new set. This generates the number 931, which is not a prime number. But it can be broken down into the primes 7 times 7 times 19, both of which are not on the list and must be added to it. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel. By doing this process over and over again, we set off a sort of chain reaction, which generates infinite prime numbers, making our initial guess that there is a finite number of prime numbers absurd. This is one of the few facts we know about primes for sure. Now, the second thing is, there is no clear pattern to them. There have been various attempts to develop a prime producing formula, which is an expression which would allow us to predict the next prime number after a given one. So far, all such attempts have failed. But there are some helpful patterns. Between 1 and 100, there are 25 primes. Between 100 and 200, there are 21 primes. Between 200 and 300, there are 16 primes. And on we go. Although even this is an on average sort of thing. Because primes become more and more sparse the higher up we go. There are 17 primes between 400 and 500. So on average, they become more scarce, although there has been an advancement in the statistical distribution of the primes, called the prime theorem. It attempts to answer the question, given a positive integer n, how many integers up to and including n are prime numbers? This was first raised by Gauss, and later confirmed by mathematicians Jacques Hadamard and Charles-Jean Poussin. The theorem looks like this. But we will use this version for simplicity. For example, let's take the number 1000. If we plug it in, we have 1000 over the natural logarithm of 1000, which is around 1000 over 6.9, which is approximated as 145. The actual number of primes up to 1000 is actually 168. It is close. But the theorem tells us something about the approximation as a percentage of the true value. Going back to the example, the true value was 168 and the approximation 145. Therefore, the approximation has a proportion of 0.86 or 86%. For 100,000, the answer is 8,686. The actual number, though, is 9,592. So if we take the percentage of that, we have 0.9 or 90%. 
In fact, the higher n is, the better the approximation. Ah, and if you're curious, we haven't even found all the prime numbers yet. The largest prime number found up to today was on October 12, 2024. 2 to the power of 136,279,841 minus 1. It has 41,024,320 digits. Although I'm pretty sure that mathematicians are going to find another one pretty soon. The last pattern observed is that primes tend to sometimes crowd themselves in this form, where p is a prime number. So like 3 plus 2 is 5, so 3 and 5. 5 plus 2 is 7, so 5 and 7. 11 plus 2 is 13, so 11 and 13. And even 29,669 plus 2, which is 29,671, both of which are prime numbers. An unsolved question is whether these are infinite or finite in number. Nobody knows, but let us know in the comment section below your thoughts about it. Also, I know that all these videos that Sophia and I make are very dense, so there's a lot of information here. So, in order to help you guys, we add a PDF link in the description below, so that you guys can follow in details all the calculations and all the steps of this video. Remember, that's the only way to learn math, by understanding every single detail and then being able to reproduce everything by yourself independently. So download the PDF link in the description below. This video was inspired by this article and this book. Link in the description. Also, if you like this video, I'm pretty sure you're gonna love this one. See you guys there.